Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. Today I'm Siti Rosalinda. Uh, we'll share with you the topic 3.3 hypothesis testing for the difference between two population means. In this topic, we divide it by two. The first one is independent samples and the second one is dependent samples. As for now, uh, we will go to the first part that is independent samples. For this part, uh, parameter is known as mu1 minus mu2. As usual, there are three types of tests. Two tail tests, right tail test, and left tail test. And mu0 here is known as hypothesis mean difference which can take any real value. There are five formula of test statistic for mu1 minus mu2 as you can see on this slide. The procedure to choose the right formula is the same as given uh, in chapter 2 under the same uh, parameter that is mu1 minus mu2. So now we go to example 3.3. Okay, I know the solution is already given to you. Okay, uh, however, I want to show you the idea behind the solution. Okay, so now we... Uh, look at the claim given we the claim that we need to test so by looking at the question you can see that this is the claim okay not that for your module there is no al uh, no alpha is given is it so just delete this one it's okay so the uh, so look at the claim given okay can we say that both brands of wall have similar average of wall distance? The keyword here is average. Average is the same as uh, is the same as mean. So for the average, <coughs> uh, the notation here should be mu because claim must be for parameter. And here there are two brands, and the relationship between them is similar. So means that this is mu one equal to uh, mu two. And since in this case we we can see that the parameter here, uh, uh, the parameter used here is mu one and mu two means that this is under difference between two means. For the difference between two means, we need to be careful with the theta used. Either this is under mu one minus mu two or mu d. Okay, mu d is, uh, is dependent sample. Mu 1 minus mu 2, that is under independent sample. We can identify uh, the theta here by looking at the information given. Okay, look at the data set for brand 1 and brand 2. We can see that there is no relationship between these two data sets. So, instead, the data are independent to each other. So, we need to use... Um, uh, mu 1 minus mu 2 so means that this is under independent samples so uh, for this case uh, to the form for uh, theta is mu 1 minus mu 2 so we need to transfer mu 2 to the left side so the new form for this claim will be mu 1 minus mu 2 equals to 0 and this is the claim so for the claim uh, after we identify the claim the next step is okay uh, construct the hypothesis this is in step one to construct the hypothesis look at the expression used this is equal meaning that this is hash now okay so construct h1 automatically we can construct h1 this is mu1 minus mu2 the Theta is the same, mu1 minus mu2 equals 2, meaning that this is should be not equal to 0. Mu0 still the same, 0, 0. Okay, so complete step 1. So now, go to step 2. Okay, step 2 is to identify, uh, to calculate the test statistic. So the theta used here is mu1 minus mu2. So the test statistic here, okay, uh, that we need to consider are uh, given here. There are five formula. Okay, so we um, the information given by the question will help us uh, to identify the appropriate uh, test statistic for the question. So from brand one data set, 
we can summarize this data okay by using the notation okay uh, since this is sample data set we can uh, look at the question 10 ball selected randomly means that this is sample okay means that this is n1 equals to pen by using um calculator we can uh, get x bar 1 and s1 okay the same for brand 2 so you can use here this is n2 the number of data is also 10 x bar 2 and s2 okay we can get x bar x bar 1 and x, we can get x bar and s by using calculator the next information given that is about the assumption of the equality of the population variance okay it's clear this is different meaning that this is sigma 1 squared not equals to sigma 2 squared so now by using the information given we can choose the formula you can see that for that case sigma 1 squared and sigma 2 squared unknown unknown here because of when we look at the information given there is no value for sigma 1 squared and sigma 2 squared so that's why okay so this okay so this is under sigma 1 squared and sigma 2 squared unknown when unknown then look at the assumption for equality of the variances Okay, the equality of the variances for this case that is sigma 1 squared equals to sigma 2 squared. Okay, and then the next one that is the number of data. When we look at the number of data, okay, and 1, 10 and 2, 10 both less than 30. Okay, so we set here. So we can see that the uh, formula that we need to choose that is formula number 5 so calculate uh, ca the uh, t test by using formula number 5 so this is already given in your solution just calculate the formula and simplify the answer at 4 decimal places ok so now complete step 2 ok so now we go to step 3 Step 3 is we want to establish the test criterion. Okay. So, um, the test criterion that uh, depends on three factors. The first factor that is the uh, distribution use. The distribution use here is T test. Uh, is T test means uh, T distribution. So, you need to plot T distribution. Okay. And then the second factor that is inequality use in H1. Then equity use here is not equals to. When not equals to meaning that there are two rejection regions here. So that's why we need to um, we need to shade uh, uh, the rejection region that lies on the left tail and right tail of the T distribution. Meaning that for this case, we have two critical values. Okay. And then the third factor that we need to consider is alpha. When we look at the question, okay, alpha is not given. When alpha is not given, so we need to assume, okay, alpha is equal to 0 0.05. We use the standard alpha. Okay, so that's why uh, alpha used here is 0 0.05. And then since alpha, um, the test is two-tail test, okay, so we need to divide our alpha by 2. Okay. So for the T distribution, we need to consider the decrease of freedom. No. So when we look at the formula given, okay, the T test used is formula number 5. So for the formula number 5, the decrease of freedom that we need to use is by using this formula. So you uh, calculate the uh, new formula the uh, calculate the new value here so we uh, and then round down the value of no so we can get the value of no now is 17 okay so by using statistical table get the for, uh, value for t 0 0.025 with a decrease of freedom 17 so we get the value 2.1098 
So now, <coughs> um, we have, uh, so now put the value of minus T 0 0.025 with a decrease of freedom, 17, another one. Uh, T 0 0.025 with a degrees of freedom, 17. Okay, so now complete step 3. Step 3, we can identify rejection region and critical values. So now we go to step 4. Step 4, we want to make a rejection. We want to make a decision on Hashna. Okay, so look at the... Uh, look at the... Uh, to make a decision. Okay, we... Uh, we we need to compare t test and the t critical value. Okay, the value of t test here 2.5, 2.5061. Okay, identify the value of t test here either under either the value is under rejection region or acceptance region. So we can see that 2.5 here is lies on this area, and then you need to write this in a proper form. So, T test here is greater than this T critical value. So, write this. And then, since this is lies on the rejection region, so that's why we reject H now. And the last step. Okay. Step 5, that is a conclusion for the claim. So, reject H now. Reject H now. Okay. Meaning that, in this case, reject H now. This is the same as we reject the claim. So, that's why. At alpha 0.05, there is sufficient evidence. Sufficient that's uh, because of rejection now. So, sufficient evidence. And here, we reject now. At the same time, we reject the claim. Okay. So, that's why uh, sufficient evidence to reject the claim. Okay. Okay. So, now complete the solution for example 3.3. So now we look at example 3.4. I know the um, the complete solution is already given to you. However, for this one, I want to show you or to share with you the working behind the solution. So we start with the claim. Claim here that is about mean. So mean denote, denoted by mu. Mean of alloy one mu one exceeds. Okay. Grit means that the uh, expression u is greater than mean of alloy 2 that is mu 2 more than that is greater than the value given 0 0.5 and this is the claim okay by looking at the claim we can see that there are two maths expression here or two inequality given here so we need to choose the right one okay the right the right one that must be the Closest to the mu naught. Okay, in this case, mu naught is 0 0.5 because mu naught is a value. So, means that this is the right, um, the right max expression or inequality for this claim. So, for this one, we need to replace with a uh, minus. Okay. For this one, we need to replace with minus. Okay, and then this is uh, this is the claim for this question. Mu one minus mu two greater than zero point five. Okay, after that, construct the hypothesis. Okay, step one, construct the hypothesis. So you can see that when we want to construct the hypothesis. Okay, um, look at the inequality used here, uh, the max expression used here that is greater than. So, since this is greater than, no equals to here. So, that's why this is H1. Okay, automatically we can construct H0. H0 for this case that is mu1 minus mu2 less than and equals to 0 0.5. So complete step one. So we now we need we will go to step two to calculate the test statistic. So to help us to choose the right test statistic, we can look at the information given. The first one that is the data summary here. The data sum given here. You can see this is a data summary and this is very clear sample. Since this is sample, means that mean here is referred to 
sample mean. Okay, so the notation used is x bar. Standard duration that is s, number of data that is n. Okay, and then the other uh, information given that is uh, assumption on the equality of the population variance. You can see that, okay, from this uh, uh, from this sentence means that this is um, tell us that sigma one squared equals to sigma two squared. Okay, so now it's time for us to choose the right uh, test statistics. So we can see that population variance unknown. There is no value for sigma 1 squared, sigma 2 squared. Okay, so this case is unknown. After that, we need, we need to look at the population, equality of the population variances. This is equal, so you need to use the formula of SP. So calculate SP here. So that's why when you look at step 2, you need to calculate SP first. Okay, simplify your value of SP at 4 decimal places. Okay, the next step is look at the sample size. Okay, both sample size are large. So that's why you need to use Z-test. Okay, and, and then uh, apply the formula for Z-test. Okay, and then simplify your answer at 4 decimal places. Step 3, step 4, step 5 as usual.